The Pet Shame Clinic has been helping ashamed animal owners across the country try and put right their embarrassing pet problems. One month on, it's time to find out whether the training and treatment has worked. We've got a little out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jane Clark's dog had an obsession with licking human flesh. Since coming to the clinic, Mark put Lexi on a training programme involving unpleasant tasting licking strips. Good girl. Let's see if they've done the trick. Hello, Thank you, Mrs. Lexi. Lexi. Wow. She's just like a completely different dog. She is. Last Nasty time is. I saw her, she was so excited about it. She licked all around the back of my neck. I think I had her tongue in my mouth at one point. Yeah. That's <laughs> gross. And do you miss the licking at all? <laughs> Not for one second. I'm <laughs> the only one here that actually does miss the licking. <laughs> wow, she does seem. Look at her. Not even bothered. Good girl. So do you carry these lick strips around with you everywhere? Always, yeah. Everybody gets issued lick strip and some treats, and then we introduce Lexi. And it's working brilliantly, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> so has she come across men in shorts yet? Not yet. We right. hadn't been brave enough yet. A month ago, Lexi's tongue would go wild if she were allowed anywhere near bare flesh, and men's knees were a particular favourite. So will she be able to resist the ultimate temptation? Now, we have three lovely boys with even lovelier knees, which look <laughs> incredibly lickable. Do you think so, Mark? Oh, yeah, very lickable. <laughs> <laughs> she seems pretty focused. She is. Let's see how she does. Okay. Do you want me to take her off? Yes, and then see if she's attracted to the knees. So, what would normally happen if... She'd have been sat on somebody's knee by now. Come on. So back home, if you did have someone in the house and they were wearing sh uh. <laughs> oh, oh, only two licks, mind. <laughs> Cheeky lick. Yeah. Two licks and that was it. Not too bad. You're the chosen one. Don't forget, these brave boys have got naked knees and no lick strips to defend themselves. Well, I think that's really good because you can see that she wanted to. Yeah. And even when she did have a quick lick of yours, <laughs> it was quite calm and then sort of straight back to being focused again. I would have thought that this would have taken ages to get out of Lexi because it was so ingrained in her. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many staffies um, out there that are dumped in rescue centres because of problems that owners think they've got, so they just think, oh, I haven't got the time or the patience or the commitment. Let's just dump them in a rescue centre. Uh, and this just goes to show we have got a different dog, a happy owner, um, and, a, and a really bright, happy future together. So is this really going to change yours and Lexi's quality of oh, life? definitely. We can have friends round and we can have a conversation mm. without having to worry about who she's slobbering all over. Mm. So, absolutely brilliant. It bodes well for the barbecue season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so simple training has licked Lexi's problem into shape. Good girl. Wow. It's been a month since South London couple Richard and Kim brought their tegu lizard with a skin shedding problem to the pet shame clinic. It seems to be a moisture retaining problem. Mark suggested smothering wallet in something not usually used on lizards. KY jelly. He's going to be like a slippery snake. <laughs> yeah, he will be. <laughs> Following Mark's advice, Richard and Kim have been giving Lucky Wallet the ultimate in luxury spa treatment. I'm lying here next to me. Is it a nice wallet? First, a nice long soak. Oh, what a Second, a gorgeous massage in lashings of olive oil. Oh, you big baby. You like that? I love you, baby. And third, smother wallet with a specialist water-based lubricant usually found on the top shelf of the bathroom cabinet. That's funded. And it's proved a very slippery <laughs> experience to have a four-foot lizard covered in oil. <laughs> Um, <laughs> trying to hold on to him. Hit him and us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's still got some nasty bits down there. A month ago, before starting this treatment, Wallet was barely shedding any skin at all. That's oh, all I got that's off. that's terrible. You're in a bad way, aren't you? Oh, OK. Well, this is nice. This is good. However, since they began the daily routine of bathing, oiling and lubricating Wallet, they've started to see some results. You're going to feel better than all this tight skin off you. It just suddenly clicked, as it were. We've yeah. had weeks of just little bits, and then just and then today, all... it's just suddenly started big pieces. So hopefully, he will continue to shed. Really pleased, yeah. It's been a good result. Okay. From now on, Richard and Kim can kiss goodbye to Wallet's skin shedding problems. <laughs> 
A month ago, Linda Strange couldn't control an eating disorder her pet parrot Georgina had developed. Bad boy, look at this mess. Mark Bad. thought this intelligent bird was bored, so suggested, as well as giving her a more interesting outlook, Linda should spend more time playing with Georgina. Good girl. So has George been throwing her food out of her cage anymore? I'm not saying she doesn't do it all the time, but she's not throwing it nowhere near as much as we did before. Oh, brilliant. So what else have you been doing with her then? Well, we've been trying a few tricks. Oh, yes. Like what? Well, we have a little ball. I count up to three and then throw it to her so she could catch it. But at the moment, she's headbutting it. Oh, she thinks she'll do it now. Oh, yes, definitely. Georgie, one, two, three, don't think she'll catch it yet. Ready, George. One, two. Looks like this bird isn't playing ball today. It doesn't really matter that she's not picking up the ball. What's important is she's being mentally stimulated, and that is so important for all cage birds, but especially parrots. Yeah, she's part of our family. That's why we do it. Good. Now, the other thing I've got to pick you up on, though, is just looking in her bowl, I'm <laughs> noticing some brightly coloured uh, treats that I don't think are that good for her. Is that chocolate? And are these, are these the only treats you use, or...? No, no, she has crisps. <gasps> OK. While it's important to reward training with a treat, you must make sure you're not killing your bird with kindness. Foods full of fat and salt, like crisps, are very bad for birds, while chocolate acts as a poison attacking its nervous system, which can be fatal. In the wild, parrots eat very little fat, so it's best to feed them a balanced diet of muesli mix, fresh fruit, and sprouting seeds. But if you want to give your bird a sweet treat, parrot sticks are the perfect thing. So maybe use that as the, the, you know, if she likes it, as the sole source of treats, because the treat should always be separate from the food, if possible. Armed with tips on tricks and healthy treats, Linda's now got everything she needs for a long and happy life with her parrot. One month ago, alpaca keeper Angela Whittle was having problems with an aggressive male called Domingo. Domingo! Mark suggested mixing him with his enemies in neutral territory to try and stop the fighting. Boys, enough! But disaster struck. Boys! A month on, Mark is making a home visit to see if things have improved. So what's been going on with Domingo? Uh, first couple of times that we tried it, it seemed an absolute disaster and I thought, that was it. You know, we were never going to get anywhere. But uh, the third time, really positive. A little bit of a squabble and a row, and then we seem to have got better and better um, since then. Do you reckon we could actually get all four in a field at the same time? I think it's got to be worth a try. Great. I love your positive <laughs> thinking. Mark wants to put Domingo to the ultimate test. Mark, do you want to release Domingo now? Mix him in the neutral field with all his enemies from Angela's herd. With this much testosterone on the loose, Angela would usually expect mayhem, but today the mood is mellow. So, Angela, we're standing here, it's quite a small paddock. They seem to be quite chilled, quite calm. They're just hanging out. What do you think about that? Absolutely wonderful, fantastic. Never expected it ever. This certainly isn't whatever's happened in the past. You know, it's down to basics. It's, it's take away the territory and bring in the distractions if we need to. And, you know, they've, they've really got nothing to be aggressive about then. No, no, you're quite right, absolutely. I wish I'd have thought about it earlier. Ah. <laughs> With all that aggression under control, Angela can now relax knowing her alpacas can live together peacefully at last. <laughs> A month ago, Genevieve Webster was at her wit's end, wondering how to stop her moggy from catching mice and continually bringing them home. Because Jasmine instinctively wanted to hunt at night, Mark suggested the best approach was to keep her in from dusk till dawn by fitting a high-tech cat flap to keep her under curfew. How many creatures have you had coming in in the night? I haven't <laughs> actually had any since we've had the new cat flap fitted. Really? None at all. But how are you coping? Does she keep you awake at night? Yes, very much so. She drives me mad. She runs round and 
jumping over the bed and then she scrabbles at the cat flap to try and get out. What do you think about that? Because is it just natural that she wants to go out at night? Absolutely. I mean, cats are hunters. They're also nocturnal, so they'll do all their business uh, at night time. And that hunting behaviour has to be replaced by something else. So, for example, this fantastic feline interactive game, which involves these little balls that they can sort of chase around the track, which they can't get out. We've got this sort of scratching area here, which is infused with catnip, which again stimulates the cat's senses. Um, and you've got these sort of plastic areas here, which they can nuzzle up against, rub their scent on, which again, it calms them down. Another thing you can bring into the house is a scratching post. And this again, it, it can reduce their frustration because they just scratch it and scratch it and scratch it. So she will feel as though she's hunting then, won't mm -hmm. she? Absolutely. I'll give it a go. Brilliant. Well, good luck with it all. And I hope that Jasmine loves her toys and that you manage to get a good night's sleep. Yep, so do I. From petulant parrots to lovable lickers. One month since first coming to the Pet Shame Clinic, things are looking up for our animals and owners. The treatment recommended in the show is specific to each case. If your pet has an embarrassing problem, always seek advice from your vet. Next time on My Pet Shame. <laughs> A ferocious feline terrorising her owner. Ow, she's got her claws right back into my skin. A pair of terrapins create a right stink. It's like my living room's got B.O., yes, it's got terrapin odour. <laughs> T.O. And a micro pig with bad breath. Oh! He does have quite whiffy breath, he does, doesn't he? doesn't he?